Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is D here with High Off Blue Hour, and we are going to be taking a look at power windows in DaVinci Resolve. And this is going to be a really basic, bare bones, simple beginner's look at power windows. Let me make sure I'm in uh, screen record mode. All right, so I got a clip that I'm going to pull in. We have a few clips we might look at, but we're for sure just going to look at this at least look at this first clip here and this is just a woman walking through a basically an autumn type scene we got a, all the leaves all over the ground and she has red hair so that kind of you know blends in well with uh the colors of the rest of the scene and whatnot and there's a bit of motion because she's walking and so i wanted that because we are going to talk a little bit about tracking your power window we're going to take a, a stab at that as well so but what are power windows well power windows are a way for you to color grade and, and just really kind of manipulate and edit and alter selected areas of your clip so to give an example of what, what what i'm talking about let's actually go ahead and do it so to locate your power windows you want to go into your color tab that's down here click color and so we're here in our color tab and what you want to do well first off the power windows are located down here right here this little icon where it looks basically kind of like an oval oval type shape with four different kind of points on it if you hover over it it'll it'll say window the this is how, where you locate your power windows mines are already selected but say if you were in some other area you would come here click that now you're in your power windows and so what we're going to do first is we're going to add a node here because we're going to kind of we're not going to go into a deep edit but we are going to kind of go through certain motions that are important to know so we want to add a node so let's right click on this initial node and go here where it says add node and we're going to go add serial So we've got it right here and now we're going to keep this highlighted and this is where we're going to do our power window. So to use a power window, you have a you know a good number of shapes and types and styles of selectors uh down here or styles of power window, I guess you could say. So let's first pick this circle shape. We're going to select that. You see we get the the framing pops up here on the screen and you can manipulate uh your circle this circle by grabbing the different small circular these like points that are you know spaced out pretty symmetrically and evenly around our circle if you grab one of those points and pull or push or drag i should say you can see things change and you can use this to manipulate the the look and style of the window and so in this particular case you can see just looking as I drag the circle if you want to see exactly what I'm affecting if you look down here in this window where it says transform and then where it says softness this area next to the power windows right here where it says softness watch that as I drag this circle you see the softness parameters start to move because that's what I'm affecting right now so if you're in a situation where maybe your edit isn't so dynamic where you can't really visually see the specifics of what you're doing whenever you're moving a parameter if you look down here in the transform and in the softness windows you should be able to see what it is that you're changing because you'll see the numbers moving around so like for instance in this case I'm changing the size and the aspect ratio and so if you look down there in the transform window next to size and aspect you'll see that those numbers are changing so that's just a way you can kind of tell what you're doing from two different directions you can tell by just visually looking at what's going on and you can also tell by looking at uh, the actual boxes down here for size pan aspect so on and so forth and you can also just change the change make changes directly from these boxes by clicking into the box and then sliding your mouse within those boxes so you see i'm affecting size by just clicking within the size box and scrolling 
the numbers from within that, that number box. Same thing with aspect ratio and pan and anything else. Okay, so that's just kind of moving around the window and just the idea of manipulating the window. But so what can you actually do with the window? One of the big main reasons that are main things that you can do with power windows is color grading. So you can have these really select um, specific kind of color choices. So let's do try to do something here where we focus in on her hair because that's kind of, you know, it's this red color. It kind of stands out. So let's just try to get a, and there's, there's probably more pinpoint ways of selecting, honing in, you know, maybe a magic mass or something like that. Um, of selecting the hair, but for now we're just going to keep it simple just to give an idea of the functionality of everything So we have her hair selected Are we at the very least we have? We have our uh, our power window over her hair. So now we're going to click into our color wheel And just where some of the kind of if you want to manipulate contrast and different things like that So now what we're going to do we're just going to make some changes to the hair. We're going to let's add some contrast Let's boost up the saturation. We want to make the hair really, it doesn't even matter if it starts to look fake. We want to make it extremely noticeable so that we can, you can really see things working and in action. Let's also do some color boost. All right, so we have the hair pretty, let's stretch it out a little bit. And yeah. All right, so that works. So we have the hair selected. We've got it this very vibrant red. So let's go back to our power windows. Let's also, let's go back into the edit tab just to press play and just see how it kind of looks just by itself without everything. All right, let me stop it because it is gonna get, I haven't done, done track, I haven't did any tracking yet. So that's not gonna help by pressing play because it's not gonna stay locked onto the hair yet. So let's go back into the color tab. But, but so what we're going to do, let's go ahead and track this. We're going to track our power window onto her hair so that we can kind of get an idea of what, what some, of, some of the things that are possible. Because you can make a selection, but if what you're selecting also happens to have a bit of movement in it, now you want to do some tracking so that you can maintain that selection throughout the whole clip. So let's give it a shot here. Uh, what you want to do for tracking, you want to go here where it says tracker. Once you have your power window over the area uh, that you want it over and you've made the changes that you want to make, so you click tracker and you get this window here. And so what we'll do, I already have it unselected, but oftentimes this 3D will be selected. Um, I don't know if 3D tracker is necessary here. I had it unselected, but I'll actually just leave it selected right here and you want to do you want to press this button right here this basically is track forward and reverse of the clip so really just kind of a complete tracking of the entire clip so you want to click that you also want to make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the clip so let's go ahead and click track forward and reverse and so you see what it looks like how you get that kind of net type effect really kind of to display the area that you're tracking and it's doing a pretty good job so far it's it's doing you know it's actually doing a bit better than it did the last time I tracked but I was trying to track a large area uh, on previous attempts and it, so it kind of things got a little off track so to speak but this one is working pretty well so far you see it's staying locked on to her hair i think the fact that the hair is such a vibrant color it sticks out and it's just very noticeable and easy for i think the uh you know computer or the program or whatever to kind of find and stay attached to so that's probably why it's doing such a good job and it's, it's, it doesn't take too long either. As you can see, this isn't like, you know, especially for my slow computer, this isn't like a, we're almost done here. So it's not a, now you see it got off track there. So you see how the, the tracking came off there. You see she just walked, it's almost like she walked right out of a wig or something. All right. 
So we are fully tracked there, but you saw right there, if you were looking that the tracking at the very end got off track. So let's go back into our edit tab and kind of see how that looks though, because it stayed on for most of the clip, but it did get off track at the end there. Let's press play. And it is skipping a little bit, but that's just because it's in the timeline. It's not exported or anything. So, yeah, it, it worked really well up until the very end. So if I do the scrub through, you'll see right at about the 13 second mark, it starts to come off. It looks like her the like her hair color is just peeling off basically like a wig or something and then she walks off and yeah. So that, and that's not bad. So and it's a 16 second clip and it got off track around the 13 second point. I'm not too mad at that. At least it kind of tells you some of the possibilities. Let's try that again. Yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. So, all right, so I'm going to stop this actually, not the video, but just stop this clip from playing because this isn't supposed to be focused on the tracking, but I do, I do think it is important if I'm going to talk about power windows, it is good to talk about the fact that you can track them because that is going to be most, most times, you know, if you're doing video editing, you're going to be looking at moving pictures, moving things in motion. So a lot of times the things that you're trying to edit and do uh, certain specific things to those those visuals are probably going to be in motion. You know what I mean? So that's why I wanted to show that. So that is ba that is a simple way to track your uh, power window. So we're back at square one. OK, so and that's that's really a lot of what I just talked about applies to a lot of the same other types of power windows. So you've got your square style power window, rectangular style power window. I mean, and this pretty much operates the same way, the same principles as the circle oval type power window. You just got a different type of shape, but the same principles in terms of how you manipulate things are still uh, the same in terms of just grabbing the different points to move your selection around. And once again, you can manipulate either by just grabbing the points right on the screen or coming down to the actual transform and softness boxes and manipulating from within those boxes by clicking in, holding, and sliding your mouse around within the parameter box, right? And then again, let me, I should point that out too. When you select a style of power window, if you want to turn it off, hit it again like that all right so select it okay I want to move on to a different power window instead of using this style make sure you go to the box turn it off now you can move on all right and this right here is the polygon window this is just uh, just another style of power window where you can you know do your types of manipulations you can uh, you know this particular style of box depending on what type of selection you're trying to make might be the most optimal one to use but it just depends on what you're trying to do so we'll click out of that one and then this one right here this is the curve tool and this is basically allows you to do more kind of a customized selections I'm not going to do an actual selection here just kind of showing the tool in action and you can do things with it in terms of to get a curve if you want to get more of a curve and then this is the gradient window or the i guess we'll call it the gradient window it's like some of these things that aren't actual you know windows by definition i have a hard time calling calling them windows but i guess these are power windows but so and you when you look at your node you see this gray area so you can kind of see which direction and which areas are being affected by the gradient. And another way you can do this is by going up here. Um, and this is and this goes for all of your power windows. If you want to see what area is being affected, you can come up here and you have this kind of yin yang, almost two, you know, dark side, light side circle here that says highlight. You click that, and now you can see the gray area shows up on screen so you can actually see how the gradient is being affected let's try one more 
kind of look at power windows we're going to try to make this really quick we're going to use this uh car basically a, a batman type uh batman batmobile style vehicle not not legitimately the batmobile but just in that same style so this is an autumn type setting we got a batmobile type vehicle sitting in front of a gothic style uh mansion so let's do our same thing let's add another node and then we're going to do some power windows again so what we'll do this time is we're going to actually just roughly select the batmobile using uh, the curve you can zoom in using the middle wheel on your mouse and uh, just going to make a really rough selection this is actually going to be really rough because I but I might be able to clean it up with the softness the softness setting or whatever so we'll see but it's gonna make a rough selection and once you close your selection that's when you kind of complete the selection and you get this center piece this anchor point I, I guess you should say this anchor point right in the middle of it so okay we got that selected and if you look over here at the node um, over here in the window over here if you look at the node you can see that it is the vehicle that is selected and then so then you can go into your color window your color wheels and I'm just gonna do some contrasty type stuff I guess I'm gonna actually put a little bit of a more of a cold bluish tint on things add a little bit more shadow this is really just to show some separation between the two uh the for the foreground and the background put even more blue tint on there like that all right and so let's go back into our power window area and then I might need to do some stuff in terms of the softness let's go back into the editing tab and see how this looks so you can see how much that makes the vehicle pop compared to before let me go back in here and then so that's how it looks before that power window edit let's go back and reconnect the, that power window by just connecting that right there and this is how it looks now so you see the vehicle pops a lot more and so this is just a very simple way of just showing some of the things you can do with the power window and at the same time what you can do you can also invert your window so what you can do is switch it so now that edit that just got applied to the vehicle now got applied to all of the areas outside of the vehicle and that's what that looks now and it still actually you know kind of looks it kind of looks good i think i preferred it more with the vehicle having the pop the way it was originally so let's go ahead and go back to that by just clicking that yeah and that's it all right you guys so that was a very beginner's basic look at power windows in davinci resolve uh, we went over what they are, where they're located, the general way that you manipulate them, and something that I felt was pretty important, which is tracking your power window, because eventually you're going to be applying a power window to something that has at least a little bit of movement to it, if not a lot of movement to it. And if there's any movement at all, you're going to want to do some sort of tracking with your window, whether it's by manual keyframe manipulation of your power window or by the method that we went over, which was the actual tracking of your object. And as you can see, even with a very cheap computer like mine, it didn't take very long at all to do uh, the tracking for a 16 second clip. So hopefully this video helped you out or at the very least maybe sparked your interest in looking even further into using power windows and learning even more about them because there's a lot more that you can do and there's a lot more kind of in-depth uh, information to be had about power windows. So that is the video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I will catch you on the next one.